Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm all pumped up. Just fired up a saw, another saw that I ported. Uh, I don't know if you guys will see that before or after, but I won't spoil it for you. So I'm fired up. So it's the perfect time. I haven't even cleaned the bench off yet, but I figured it's the perfect time. To Where are we at? Part 5 in how to port a chainsaw. Go through 1 through 4. Uh, they're in a playlist. I also have a playlist with a cutaway. Uh, I probably sound like a broken record by now, but uh, I try and put everything in playlists. So if you guys are looking for a specific saw, if it's been on my channel, it's in a playlist. Um, okay, part five. We are almost ready to grind, but believe it or not, guys, we are not ready to grind yet. This part, I'm going to show you guys how to lay your port work out so that you're not... You can just go in and start grinding and recheck and grind and recheck and grind and recheck. I'm going to show you guys how to get your your port work more or less laid out in a way that um, you can hit your numbers fairly easily. It's going to take some longer than others. Um, I'd advise you to sneak up on your numbers, uh, meaning grind so that you're almost at your line or your mark or whatever you're doing and then check it. Because um, a lot of times what you think is almost your number could often be your number or slightly past and and this is where you don't want to start going too far okay i'm going to bring you guys in nice and close here and let's let's re-zero the timing wheel i'm probably i may or may not leave that in this uh, video and uh we're going to re-zero the timing wheel i got to mount the cylinder and i'm going to show you guys how to lay out your port work before you grind part six we're going to start grinding we will start on the transfers uh, I always like to start on the transfers because that's the easiest part to grind and you get a feeling for how your plating is going to grind. Um, we can talk about that. Some plating is going to be really hard, some is softer. Um, I've had plating chip. Um, typically chip plating might be your tooling is getting a little dull even if you don't think it is. But I'm going to try and keep you guys out of trouble. I, I've said it before, this is going to be a mild port job. And uh, we'll go from there. Okay? So I'm going to get you guys all set up and we'll do part five of how to port a chainsaw. I'll see you guys in a minute. Okay, guys. So, first thing I'm going to do on this particular saw, I'm going to take a felt marker. And I am going to mark the face of this piston. Now, preferably a felt marker that, uh, here, we'll try this one. Oh, that one's no good. I'm very prepared for this, guys. Okay, take a felt marker, and I want you to blacken where the exhaust port is. This is how I do it. Okay, that'll work for now. Now, take your cylinder, basically what I'm doing is, that's, I call it poor man's layout fluid. Machinists use layout fluid and, um, to scribe lines and things. So after we get this thing zeroed, we are going to figure out where our exhaust port is, okay, and we're going to figure out how many degrees of rotation is how many thousands of an inch okay so I'm just gonna cinch this down while I'm yakking with you guys and we'll go from there now again there's other ways to do this and uh, there's so many different ways to port even in what you do to the saw um, some people shoot for high compression um, this is just good old-fashioned port work um, changing, we are manipulating the timing numbers of the saw is all I'm doing and I'm making it breathe more air. Okay, we're just cinching this down. Okay, I'm going to zero the timing wheel. I've done that a million times on camera, so I'm probably just going to fast forward past that. Give me a second here, guys. Okay guys, I got my wheel zeroed, everything's good there, a little bit of run out in it, but like I said before, that typically 
that typically doesn't bother me. I find there's no difference in readings. Okay, so we got our wheel zeroed. Uh, go back in the series if you forget how to do that. Okay, just making sure it's good. <laughs> I'm always double and triple checking my wheel. It was 61 degrees on both sides. Okay, right there. Again, I'm going to reef it down good. You guys can never, ever double check this stuff too many times, especially when you're starting, because you will often, you will often bump your wheel and you won't know it. Okay, we're at 61 in both directions. Now I'm going to set you guys up on the, on the tripod on the bench here, and I'm going to show you guys how to figure out how many degrees of rotation equals uh, how many thousands of cylinder. So just give me a second here Okay, I got you set up here Okay, I'm moving my piston up and down now. I'm gonna find bottom dead center right now That's gonna tell me two things one. That's gonna tell me how much piston skirt I have left. Okay Which will tell me whether I'm in a free port or not. What if we did a piston swap, okay? Okay, this is just a, a sharpened pick. I'm going to go right to the bottom of that exhaust port. Sorry, my finger's in the way. And I'm going to gently scribe a line. Okay. Okay, so I have my piston at top dead center. I kind of fudged this in the last shot, so I'm reshooting it for you guys. I want you guys to see. Okay, we mark... We mark the bottom at top dead center so that we know our skirt length. We don't want to mark our 10 degrees anywhere by top dead center because there is a dwell where the piston doesn't move up or down at top dead center and bottom dead center. You lose some timing there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go 30 degrees, scribe a line, and then I'm going to move it to 40 degrees and scribe another line and that will get me okay now that I have my lines I'm going to take the top end off I'll show you guys now I already know how far this piston travels based on the lines but we're like I said this is entry level stuff this is the kind of stuff that you'll need to know now this is 50 millimeter by 34 millimeter stroke same as a 268-262. Um, there, I'm just going to move this. I got this tilted up. Echo clearly looked at the Husqvarna 266-268 when they built this saw. Um, and in fact, this saw has slightly better timing numbers out of the box. It doesn't... It, it's kind of lazy though, and I'm not sure why. And this is the fun of porting. You never know what a saw is going to do until you grind on it. Okay. There's our cylinder. Now we have two lines. Now I'm going to measure these lines, do a little math, and I'll tell you how far this thing moves. Okay. Now if you guys look, it's probably going to be hard for you to see. There's a lower line and an upper line. Okay. From the top line, from the bottom line to the top line, okay, from here to here is 150 thousandths. So that tells me that I want to know what two degrees is. I typically don't move my transfers or, or any exhaust, any port in one degree in increments. I typically do around two. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna write this down, okay? So, if 10 degrees equals 150 thousandths, okay, if 10 degrees equals 150 thousandths, that's about 15 thousandths per degree. So, 2 degrees equals 30 thousandths, okay? Okay, so now I know if I draw a line that's 30 thousandths higher than the other one, then like this. Then where the port is, I know I'll get about two degrees. Does that make sense, guys? Now, the other thing, I've been asked about 
free port. Okay, this saw, this saw has about two hundred thousandths. Okay, this has two hundred thousandths skirt from the bottom of the exhaust port. Okay, Exa the bottom of the exhaust port opening to the bottom of the skirt. Okay, that's what free port is. When they're talking, when you read online about big bore kits for MS 660s, that's usually what I hear about. Talking about the piston free ports, well that means that this skirt is too short and when the piston goes all the way to top that center, it actually opens your skirt to your exhaust port and your transfer charge gets bled out. That's what free port is guys. Okay, I'm going to get you reset up here. So now we know about 30 thousandths is 2 degrees. Okay guys, just going to wipe off our poor man's layout fluid. So that way I know. Uh, I typically don't measure port widths. Um, you can if you want to. You can widen ports, exhaust and intake. Again, uh, you guys, you guys do try these things and uh, try these things and, and let me know. Um, some guys, some guys like to measure the port width. Now, if you look, if you look at how small, okay, look at how narrow this exhaust port is. It's quite narrow. I could widen this. Now, one thing you want to check is to make sure that if you widen the port, you don't want to get into your, to your windows for your transfer, right? Otherwise you're, otherwise when you're compressing the bottom end, it's going to bleed out through the exhaust port, right? Does that make sense? Okay, so just all I can say to you guys is when you start porting, really look at how these engines work and try and understand how they work. That way you'll get yourself out of trouble. Uh, there's been many a time at night I'm in the house and I'm thinking, I got this incredible idea about how I'm going to make, how I'm going to make a, a saw go fast and then I'll come into the shop and I'll think about it or I'll, I'll try and lay out whatever my idea is to realize that you know this is too wide or that won't fit so just be aware of that guys um, always double and triple check anything that you're gonna grind on okay so we're laying out the cylinder so we now know we now know our skirt length uh, if we were going to do a piston swap, that would be super important. <coughs> right? In this case, we're not doing a piston swap, so we don't care about skirt length. But it's good to know, guys, right? Um, the more things you can know uh, about a saw, the better. Uh, I'll take piston measurements often, and I'll put them in my book in case I'm ever looking for a piston. If I've already had one on my bench and I've measured it, um, I put it in the book and then I know if I need a piston for a saw, I'll just order one based on measurements I've already taken. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys how to figure out your exhaust roof height, okay? It's very simple. Watch this. I'll put the piston at bottom dead center. I will take my ring right here, okay? I'm going to take this ring. I'm going to put the open end on the intake side so it doesn't catch anything and it usually won't but it's just good practice okay i'm going to carefully seat that ring in there now watch this guys the pistons at bottom to the center i'm going to slide this head down now when you're just starting put your bolts back in always always cinch everything down for the purposes of this video i'm going to hold it with my hand okay now, I'm going to spin the saw backwards, okay, until I hit my exhaust timing number. Now, what is that? I can't remember because I timed this thing how long ago. So, I'm going to grab my handy dandy book, and this is why I say to always write everything down, and let's have a look see. Give me a second here, guys. Okay, here's the good old timing book. Our exhaust opens at 102 after top dead center, right? So here, let's let's see if that's correct. I'm gonna turn the engine backwards, which makes the piston go up. 
and I'm going to stop at 102, okay? Now if you look, I'm going to screen grab the million candle power flashlight. If you look, let's do this again. This is where it's important. See, and again guys, I'm not doing any editing. I want to show you guys, if you're not sure, and I'm not sure, okay? If you're not sure if what you're doing was correct, then start over again. I'm going to put the piston at top dead center. I want to make sure that no nothing is moved, okay? And we're bang on the money. Okay. So once again, see, uh, even I double check and triple check, guys. It You know, it doesn't matter how long it takes you to build a saw. You know what matters? If the customer likes it or you like it and you'll forget how long it took you to build the saw years down the road. Okay. Let's put this back and same thing. I'm going to carefully spin it backwards till I hit 102 on here. Okay. Well, according to our timing wheel right now and everything, this thing cracks a little a little later than what we think it does, okay? Which is fine. The ring never lies, okay? And this is why this ring technique always trumps anything because the ring don't lie, okay? I'm going to go backwards. I'm going to try 105. Okay, there we go, guys. So for whatever reason, our first ray of light didn't hit till 102. But that ring is flush at 105. So what do we do? Well, I'm going to say the ring don't lie. And I'm going to go with what the ring's telling me. Now, the timing numbers I was getting in this power saw were actually pretty good. But, uh... I run enough saws and I've built enough saws that the timing numbers didn't match what I felt. <clears throat> if that makes sense. Either or guys, timing is timing. It don't matter where you start, it matters where you end up. And again, start slow and work your way up. Now, if this thing opens at 105, which is what it's telling me, and I wanted it to open at 100, okay? I turn the wheel backwards till it hits 100, and now look. Okay. You guys see how high that is? Okay, guys, I measured my port height. Okay. And then I measured my ring height. Now, I want to show you guys what five degrees looks like on this power saw. Okay. We know every two degrees is 30,000. So if we want six degrees, let's dial in six sixty thousandths. Or sorry, 90 thousandths. <laughs> okay, guys, see that little bit? Here's my hand for reference. That's what six degrees of timing looks like. This is why I use a wheel. I can't, I can't grind that. Okay, now look at the difference in the ring height. Okay, on the exhaust port. Can you see that? It's slightly lower than that. Okay. So this is why I use a timing wheel, because I can't accurately grind that many degrees. Um, some people can, but I, I just, I can't. Okay, guys, so if we want the exhaust to be at 100, we take our marker, make sure it's a sharp edge marker, and I draw a line there, okay? A good line, and now I let that... I'll let that dry. Now, for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to move it. Let it dry. Now look. You see that? We have, we have a reference point now. That's why you let it dry. See how it's smudged? You can see the line, though, there. See that nice line? That would be where I would grind to. Now, even this is a good reference point, better than just 
willy nillying it, right? Now, another thing, guys, transfer timing. Guys always say, how do I know where the transfer's open? You look through the exhaust port, you look through the spark plug, which usually isn't the best way, or, watch this, guys, you'll like this. This is the, okay, same thing. Piston is at bottom dead center. I slide my cylinder on, I hold it with my hand. These transfers opened at 122. Let's confirm that we turn it backwards until it hits 122. Now the reason why you don't turn it forwards is it has to go up. It's after top dead center, right? So we would have to rotate it all the way up, which would push our ring to the squish band. Okay, so that's why you go backwards. Now if you look at this by eye, that's bang on with the chamfer. Let's see if you guys can see that. That is bang on with the chamfer. So these are indeed at 122 degrees. So for whatever reason, and I have a feeling it's the odd shape of this exhaust port, my first ray of light technique was slightly off. And that's why I always, always check my exhaust roof height with a ring. Okay, so for the purposes of this video, this series, we are not doing any upper transfer work. Um, you can if you want. Um, that, 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 those maneuvers are, are best left to the seasoned veteran. Because really guys, um, you're going to be hard pressed to beat that. And those aren't the best shape or design or anything. You're going to be hard pressed to out grind a casting. Okay. Now on the intake side right here on the intake side, the way I do it, I take a marker, same as, same as the other one. You can't use the ring on this. At least I don't take your marker. I just draw on there because you're grinding the bottom of the intake. This ring is 37 thousandths. I would literally, and this is how I do it, I'll put the ring in there. Okay. I will get the ring as level and straight as I can. Often I will use the micrometer. Okay. And I'll set it to a point and I'll go all the way around and I'll get the ring so that it's flush. Okay. I want it flush with the intake. Look through the hole and you'll be able to see the ring protruding into there. Okay. An old piston works good for this. Okay, you get it down. And now, take, take your scribe, whatever you want to use, okay? Try not to damage the plating, but take your scribe and just go like this gently. And you will scratch the marker off. Okay? Now, we know that this line is a couple thousandths lower There you go. You guys can just barely see that faint line. Okay. That's what two degrees of timing looks like on this saw. And I'm showing you that on purpose because I want, I want you guys to understand that when you go into a power saw and uh, you just start hacking away, you can really, really damage or not damage, but you can really drastically change the fueling and running characteristics of a saw with a, with a couple of heavy handed swipes. Okay guys, I hope that helped you for part five. That's how you lay out a cylinder. Uh, I fumbled around there a little bit. Um, again, good thing I'm a better mechanic than a, than a photographer, but you guys, you guys see what the deal is there. Um, figure out a way that you can accurately measure your port heights. I've seen guys use tubes of cardboard. They'll measure from the bottom of the port to the squish band, okay? And they'll cut a strip of paper that's so much taller and they'll put that in there and they'll mark with that. That works fine too. Um, whatever works for you guys. I just want to get you guys porting because this is fun. And uh, you can do it. Um, and I'm going to continue to say start small and work your way up. Don't go, don't go for the gusto on your first uh, move. You know, Don't raise the exhaust too high and don't lower the intake too high. Um, because you're going to see literally 
those fine little amounts completely will change the way the saw runs. So, and I've learned that you start moving things too far, you could have a saw that don't idle, it's spitting back through the carb, it won't start. Um, or it's super peaky, it sounds cool, but now you're falling with it and you put it in a bigger piece of wood and it literally has less power in the cut than a 50cc stock saw. Um, you can do that with a big saw if you move the numbers too much. Um, each saw is going to be different, guys. Um, that's why it's hard for me. People are always asking me for numbers. I don't know. Um, if it's not a saw I've done, uh, I don't know. If it's a saw I'm done, well, it depends on what carbs on it. Uh, what you're doing to your transfers. All that kind of stuff matters, guys. So, And then, what do you expect the saw to do? Um, I tend to build saws fairly warm, we'll call them. I, I like a warm saw because I have too many saws, guys. And um, I'm not... I'm not production falling. If I was production falling, I might turn my saws down a little bit. And, and that's the straight deal there. Um, you you got to build base. It, we all want a hot saw. Uh, hot saws are giggly and they're fun. But it's like, you're not going to be happy falling with a hot saw. Because they don't idle for very long. And they'll blow up right away. So, um, take your time. Grind slow and steady. Double, triple check everything and just have fun, guys. Uh, that's all I can tell you. This is fun. Um, if you're not prepared to wreck an OEM cylinder, then buy an aftermarket one and port that. Uh, and then if you feel that, you know, if you feel that you succeeded at that, then port your OEM cylinder. Or you might find your, your import cylinder runs amazing and you go, ah, I'll port that OEM another day and you never do. Um, You'd be surprised how long some of these saws can last, even turned up. Um, there's more to the story than just timing, um, but that is purely experience, guys. So before we grind, I want to say, just try it, guys. Your first cylinder, um, unless you've done a lot of precision grinding, you know, woodworking or any of that kind of stuff, your first cylinder, if you pop it off in five years and you look at it, you're going to go, ugh, that's okay, guys. It doesn't matter how it works or how it looks. It matters how it works. And it matters if it lasts. And uh, you guys can do this. You really can. Okay. Uh, I know you guys have been anxiously waiting. In the next part of this series, we're going to be grinding. We are going to start by grinding the transfers. I freehand my transfers. Um, I can also show you how to lay out a, a deadly transfer so that you don't mess up. We'll do that in the next one as we're doing it. I think this uh, I think this saw is gonna run good. That exhaust number, now that I see it with the ring, um, the exhaust number is lower than I thought. I thought it was 102, but it's 105, which is the reason why this saw is kind of slow. It's grunty, but it lacks chain speed and RPM, so uh, we're gonna fix that. Okay, part five, we're done. How to lay out a cylinder. As always, thanks for watching, take her easy, and I can't wait for part six, because that's where the magic happens, and we're going to get those hard-to-get shots, I promise you. Later, guys.